Okay, we're recording. So um, I'm Anna Zobel, and I we are doing this uh, team call. Uh, Burnett and I are here Hi. today, and the other picture on there is my phone because we were trying to figure out Zoom calling. And this is my daughter is also here, <laughs> and she's my little workout rep buddy. So um, anyway, we told the rest of our teammates that we'd be able to record this call for them because I'm just going to give a couple of things that I learned at the event that we had this last Saturday. It was the Hammer and Chisel event here in Fort Hall, Idaho. This. And oh, good. <laughs> anyway, it's uh, it was run by Scotty Hobbs, and um, the big event was that we got to have Sagi Kalev come and do a workout with us, and also we got to um, see a bunch of Star Diamond people give really good speeches. So um, I'll just dive right in here and kind of look at my notes. So, and of course, this is. Um, a tip for you is to always take notes for sure. Uh, another tip that I've heard is, and I didn't do it with this one because it was kind of a short event, but if you're going to a big event like Summit, is to leave a couple of pages blank at the beginning of your notes and to take the kind of action steps that you're going to be taking and put those at the beginning of the notes so that you don't have to go searching for them um, in your notes. So, um, anyway. So the first speaker that I went, got in with was uh, Jennifer Greenberg. And she said, one of the notes I took was that most fear um, happens when we focus on ourselves. That's when we have the most fear. So um, one of my, and th this goes along with my personal development that I've been doing. I've been doing a lot of things about fear and how I want to have faith instead of fear. And I found this great book called May Cause Miracles. And um, it's a 40-day um, thing where she gives you affirmations every day and she gives you um, like meditations every day. And it's all about um, instead of choosing fear to choose love. And it's all about also forgiveness, especially self-forgiveness. So I have all of this in my mind as I'm listening to these things, you know, that they are telling, you know, Jennifer Greenberg also said, you know, use positive affirmations um, and make sure you, you know, she talked about the power of self-confidence and that kind of thing. <laughs> like, I promise she wasn't coughing earlier. So um, anyway, she said that um, she really focused on how you are unique and you are a gift to the people around you. And so if you focus on yourself, and you are afraid to share that gift with people, then you're not going to be affecting the, you know, hundreds of people that you could be affecting. Um, and so, so that was one of my big aha moments was, you know, with these affirmations from that book, it was, you know, I forgive myself for choosing fear and I choose love instead. Um, and there's lots of different ones, but that's kind of the gist of it. And so um, one of the big aha moments that I had personally was that, um, I forgive myself all the time for eating the wrong things. You know, I, I actually give that as a, um, as a tip to the people in my challenge groups is that, you know, if you do the wrong things, you know, if you eat the wrong things and, um, and not that you immediately forgive yourself and then do something to, you know, reinforce your identity as a healthy eater. So for example, quick example is that, you know, I eat chocolate, you know, every day. <laughs> um, and so I, um, but if I eat too much chocolate, I'm not going to sit there, sitting there and beating myself up about it. it. doesn't do any good. And in fact, it makes me eat more chocolate because I feel bad. <laughs> and so um, so I t tell them that I immediately say, you know, forgive myself and then I just move on. I immediately start over and in fact, I even do a little thing where I'll actually eat a um, carrot or something and I'll say, in my mind, I'll be like, see, I'm a healthy eater, I'm eating carrots, you know, even though I just I had this entire chocolate bar or whatever it was. Um, so I thought, you know what, I'm doing that with my food, I should be doing that with myself, with my fears about coaching, my fears about all these things. And so 
specific fears for me have been, for example, you know, um, oh, you know, I don't have my own, maybe I'm not a good enough example to be a good enough leader for my team. And, um, and lots of different reasons come up in my mind. It kind of gets in this spiral and I get all afraid. And, you know, I don't have my own scripts. I don't, you know, post enough on Facebook, all these things. Well, I need to, rather than thinking of more and more reasons why I'm not a good leader or why I'm not a good coach to people, I need to immediately forgive myself for choosing those fears and then choose love instead by showing love to other people, love to myself also, um, you know, give myself a break basically, but then do the work. So that goes along with one of the other speakers um, that talked. And unfortunately, I didn't write down his name, <laughs> but he's from Canada. He is, um, I believe, just a star diamond, just kind of more starting out. His first name was Sean, I wrote down. <laughs> um, but he talked about having a no excuses mindset. So that's kind of my next step is that I forgive myself and then I have a no excuses mindset that I'm like, you know what? Regardless of how my Facebook feed is, regardless of whether or not I have my own scripts or whatever. Um, regardless of what I did in the past, you know, that I need to have a no excuses attitude and um, really then do the work, really invite people, start my own, you know, coach basics groups, um, do these calls that we're doing, you know, this is a direct, you know, thing with that. I was like, you know, I need to just start doing the calls and questions will come up and I have to have the confidence, you know, I am a good coach. I no, you know, I'm like, I have valuable stuff to say, um, <laughs> that kind of thing. So, um, and he, this Sean that talked, uh, had a really inspiring story. You know, he's got these full-time jobs, like literally two different jobs. One of them goes into like two in the morning and the other one starts at 7 a.m. And this guy is still building the business and he's very, you know, he, he says, I will statements, you know, like, and he said, and he said there on stage, he's like, I will become a millionaire with Beachbody. You know, I will, he said his big goal is to have like 18,000 people on his team. And even if my goals are not as big as that, um, I can still have a no excuses mindset. And I really kind of caught the vision as I was there. It's kind of one of those things where you're like, I know this, but then when you really catch that vision, um, and it was actually while I was driving there, I thought about, I was re listening to other personal development. Again, you got to keep listening to that. And the personal development said, sure. think back in your life to the last time that you were super excited about stuff. You were just alive. You know, what, you know, what were you doing in your life when you were just like on fire and like thinking that things were amazing? And I thought back to my freshman year in college when I had started my own um, club on campus for doing humanitarian service. And I was just so excited. And I remembered that the reason why I was so excited was that I thought about not how many people I would personally talk to and stuff, but that if I could get other people to do these projects with me and then have them, you know, do other projects and other projects and other projects, that we could affect so many more people by these people doing these projects either with me or even on their own. And so then I like had this epiphany, like, geez, you were, I was so excited about this like compound effect of that project and doing these humanitarian things that would then go to help these people that were in need. I was like, wow, you know, what am I thinking? This is another thing like that. The Beachbody community is where I affect the people that I know and I help people get started. I help them with their nutrition and their workouts. And then they lose weight, which is something that they need, you know, this obesity epidemic, you know, that's definitely one of my values. Sorry, she's kind of falling down here, <laughs> scooching down. So, and then if I can help other people become coaches, then, um, you know, Burnett and I were just talking before. I mean, this is my vision is that, those people that I help help other people, which is what happened. I have a friend, Adrian, who helped Burnett 
and then Burnett will help other people that I don't even know. And so that's what's exciting to me is that there will be people, and I imagine somebody like in Florida, because I live in Idaho, so somebody clear in Florida will be affected by, you know, a third generation person that I don't even know, but that is helping them because I started the seed with somebody else that I did know. So um, anyway, so I thought I, I was really able to just kind of catch that vision again with Beachbody. I know I've known it before, but to really think about how exciting that is. Um, and then, okay, so I'm going to look at my next notes. And Burnett, do you have any questions right now or anything? Like while I'm looking at my notes. Okay, so um, uh, the next speaker was uh, Brigitte Linford, and she's my coach, actually. She got the leadership award, and she's just an excellent speaker. And she told a really personal story that was just really heartbreaking, and then she was able to kind of turn it around and, and have it be something that we can all learn, you know, about telling our own stories. Um, she talked about how, and she said this before, how she had depression before. Oh. Yay. <laughs> um, and she struggled with depression from like the time she was in sixth grade, literally. And um, one of her fears was that she was afraid she'd be a bad mom and that she would hurt her children, basically. Not hurt them, but like by passing on the depression or by not being a good enough mom or, you know, if she ended up, um, back in a, in a, um, hospital because of her, um, depression, you know, she worried about that. And so that was, she said, in some ways, sometimes your fears can be a good thing because it helped her really, you know, change her life because she's like, I have to, when she had her first baby, she's like, I have to turn my life around. I really need to do this. But then she said that this past winter, um, her fears kind of stopped her. And so um, because what happened was she told the story about how she was videotaping her daughter at the skating rink, the ice skating rink. And she was all excited. And she was thinking how someday this is going to be on A&E because her daughter is going to become an Olympian and everything. And she, it was all this great moment. And her daughter fell down. And she went over and went, bent down to pick her up or to help her up. And she looked down at her own skate and she was horrified because she, her skate had rolled over her own daughter's finger and had severed the finger off. And so, and Burnett's heard this story before because Brigida has put it on Facebook. So um, what she didn't, what I didn't know from her Facebook posts was that she really went into a deep depression Um when she went, she had stayed with her daughter in the hospital for days and days and days um, in the ICU and she couldn't get out of bed and they reattached the finger and had to have all these leeches and everything. And just, and so um, anyway, and then she said one day she was actually able to be at home because her husband was um, with her daughter <clears throat> and she said that her alarm clock had gone off five hours before and she was still in bed. And she had all of these negative thoughts running through her head of the depression coming back and saying that, you know, the, basically the gist of it was I'm a bad mom and I'm, you know, here I thought I would screw my kids up emotionally and here I've already screwed them up physically, like cut off her finger. And so, and it was just heartbreaking to hear her say all these thoughts, you know, and I was like, wow, you know, um, and she said that when she was laying there in bed, she, you know, had all these thoughts and then all of a sudden the next thought came, um, or so, or so says the, the story you're telling yourself. And then she remembered she had been to Tony Robbins, which is again, doing personal development has helped her through this. She says, um, he said, as your story goes, so goes your life. And so she said that she had to really look at that story that she was telling herself and she gave steps of how she was able to turn this around and what we do when we have negative stories. So I'll quickly do these steps. And then, um, she said first is recognize that there is a story and a narrator of your life and that it's separate from you. 
you know, that you are not the story, you know, you not, it's not that you are a bad mom or you are a bad coach or whatever it is that you have to recognize that there is a story. And then she said, number two is write down the story um, that that narrator is telling you. And then um, she said this third step is a step that a lot of people skip and it's the most important. She says, ask, is this empowering you or is it holding you back? Um, and she says, you can be grateful for your stories. Like she said, she, like I pointed out before, sometimes the stories help you at one point in your life, but then you do need to change the story if it is not empowering you. Um, and then identify another story. Um, and she said, one way of finding another story is to act like you are the supportive friend of this person that has a story. And I like that idea. So, you know, if you were at Brigitte's bedside when she's having all these horrific thoughts, what would you tell her the new story should be, you know? Um, and then find evidence. And number five is find evidence to support your new story. So going out, you know, doing the things that you want to do to support that story. So for example, my fear of being, you know, not being a good enough coach, not being a good enough leader, you know, I have to stop and think, is that empowering me to have those fears? And it's not. And so then I need to change the story, you know? So I have different affirmations that I'm saying, you know, Scotty Hobbs said his whole beach body career, I'm amazing coach. He would say that every day, you know? So I've started, I have it on my phone. I'm like, I'm an amazing coach, you know? And Brigitte gave me another one that was like, I quickly and easily hit success club, you know, um, things like that. And, um, and again, my new story is going to be that also that I forgive myself when I have those fears and that I'm going to have love instead. And, um, so anyway, all right. So I'm like, let me see who the next person was. So, um, oh, I really liked, so Barbie Kalev uh, talked, that's, um, Sagi Kalev's wife. She, um, was a beach body coach before. And apparently they met, she says, I think she said they met at like a, uh, Tony, Rob Tony Robbins event. I thought maybe they met through Beachbody. I don't know. Anyway, I might be wrong on that. So, you know, you'll have to Google it. <laughs> um, anyway, she was a Beachbody coach before and she was already successful. And she said she would literally do hashtag. Her hashtag was BFD. Her name was Barbie Decker. And she said, Barbie freaking Decker. She was like, she had this attitude of like, I don't need no one. I don't, you know, and wanted to be hardcore. She really wanted to have that significance of success, you know, of doing things that were successful. And she said that she figured out that she actually, she, she you know, really became successful in Beachbody, but then she realized she still wasn't ha as happy as she should be. And her big message, which I thought was really interesting, was that she said to be kind, that that was her big goal this last year. Here she's like, huge, successful Beachbody coach. And she said that she, um, you know, wanted to be kind now. And that's when she said now she is, that was her big goal. And she did that. She became kind, was acted kind towards other people. And she pointed out that the, the other people that say, oh, I've found so much love in Beachbody, she said, that's because you brought love and you were looking for that. She said, I was looking for, you know, achievement. And so that's what I found. And so I thought that was really interesting. Her other um, tips were to be real, be kind, and then know that you are worthy. And so, um, and then be vulnerable and be willing to share. Um, and her big message was, uh, from a book called Darren or sorry, called oh, best year ever by Darren Hardy was what kind yeah. of story do you want to tell at the end of this year? And so she said she wanted to be able to say, I am a kind person. Oh. And, um, and she said, if you have struggles, you know, say I had these struggles and I was still able to build my business, you know? Um, and so, okay. And we're almost done because I've got like two more speakers. Um, Scotty Hobbs was the next speaker. He is Brigitte's coach. And so, and he's really inspirational. Um, so he said, 
you know, basically his big question was, what do you want out of life? Decide what you want. Um, and I personally had some interesting things for this, you know, in my own life. I'm just sharing with you so it gets you guys thinking about it. Was that, you know, so many Beachbody coaches say, oh, I want to be able to quit my job. And I was like, well, I don't really want to quit my job. <laughs> and so, you know, you have to think, well, okay, what is my goal then? Um, and I, you know, I love having the extra income and stuff and I use it for kind of non-budget things. And now we actually use it for my daughter's daycare. She's in like an excellent daycare. Um, but, um, and then I also, you know, I've always wanted to be a mom, but when I stayed home for my maternity leave, I kind of felt like I was kind of trapped, like <laughs> a little bit of cabin fever. So, and then I realized I was like, okay, well that was just because she was newborn and we were trying to not leave the house with her. So I think it would be different as a mom. Anyway, so what I finally decided this a couple of weeks ago was that what I actually want is freedom, you know, um, because our daughter had an ear infection and, <clears throat> You know, here I was all worried about, oh, shoot, you know, who's going to watch her? Is my husband going to stay home or am I going to stay home? I had to use up a bunch of my PTO days. and But here she has this fever and I want to take care of her. But I was so worried about being at work, you know. Um, and so that's what I decided that I want is I want freedom that if I wanted to stay home, I could but I don't have to, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like I can keep my career if I want to, but if I want to stay home and if she needs extra attention or an extra help, then I'm able to do that and not have to worry about like, Oh, well now I have no PTO left. Um, and I do still have some PTO this year, by the way, but <laughs> it was the worry that I had a couple of weeks ago. Um, and also, you know, I have a great career, but what if I get injured and I can't work anymore? Or what if I, you know, <clears throat> the economy tanks again and I get fired or laid off or whatever. And so, so that's what I would like to develop for myself. And so I'm working on growing the business because not because I need the money right now, but because I want some more money because <laughs> I want vacations and stuff. I, there's other things that I want to pay for with it, but um, also that I have that security and financial freedom to be able to do those things. So, um, let's see. So he did ask some, some questions that help you find your purpose. Um, the questions are, who are you? Number two is what do you do? Number three is what do you enjoy? Um, you know, what do you actually enjoy out of all these things? And um, what do you enjoy doing, you know, as a, in real life, you know, <laughs> Um, and then it says, who do you help? So you kind of say like who your niche market is, like who are the people that you help? Um, and what do they need? And so he went off about how he helps moms and dads and that they need more time with their kids, more freedom, you know, being able to pay off their debts, all those things. Um, and he also wants them, he has this big greater vision of them raising the next generation of people that, you know, are able to do all of these things and, you know, basically be good parents. Um, and then how does their life change uh, with what you offer? And so again, he talked about helping people create their own lives by design. Um, so. All right, last, just a couple of thoughts from Sagi Kalev. He's, um, if you don't know, he's the one that did Body Beast. He is the celebrity trainer, the guy that looks like the Hulk or something. <laughs> he's huge. And I got a picture with him, so you have to look on my Facebook. Um, anyway, he says uh, one of the lessons he's learned in life is to be humble or you will be humbled. <laughs> and I love that lesson because I've had that lesson also. It's kind of funny. It's like, all right, uh, you know, sometimes and I've also heard the, you know, be careful what you pray for. Like, don't pray for humility because you'll get humiliated. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, I, it's funny. In my past, in I've, I've actually prayed, like, can I, you know, be humble and not have to go through the humiliation? How about that? You know, <laughs> how about if I just act humble now? So, 
Um, so he really talked about um, making oh, sure oh. his talk was called Stand in Your Power. So know who you are, have faith in yourself, and have faith that things are going to work out. Um, and he talked about how you can become a victim or you can be the victor. And so he said there's a hero in each one of us, and it's you have to make your own decisions. Um, and his affirmation that he says every day is, I am the one. Basically, like, I'm the one that will make it. I'm the one that will succeed. I am the one that will do it. Um, and he, he talked about gratitude also. So, um, so uh, that's all of my notes. Uh, there was probably a lot more in there also, but I didn't want to make this go too long. Uh, Burnett, do you have any other questions or anything or, or any thoughts that have come up while we've been talking? Um, well, it's not really, I mean, I, all of those speakers, I took away, you know, a little bit, like the light bulb definitely went off when you spoke about each speaker. Like there was this little snippets that I was like, oh, that's a really good takeaway. Like, I'm going to remember that. I think right now what I'm mainly concerned about is just um, like more of time management because it's mm -hmm. just like, ha you know, we are wellness coaches. You know, we are supposed to be like role models and stuff, but it's like at the same time, we are hustling, you know, we are, you know, trying to be productive and use as much time as we can. Um, but it's like, how do we balance it so that we are taking care of ourselves mm -hmm. without draining our energy and um, forfeiting our wellness basically for the business? And that's kind of like what I'm kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Still figuring out. <laughs> yeah, you know, and honestly, it's something that we all have to figure out every time. You know, basically throughout your time as a in your business, it won't go away. <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, it is always a balance. And I do like, um, and it's some advice from um, his name's um, uh, David Bednar. <laughs> Um, oh, it's telling me we have 10 more minutes. Okay. Anyway, um, that he said that you should have, try to balance things over time. There's no way that you can have like every single part of your life have equal parts of your day, you know? Um, cause then you'd have to do eight hours of work, eight hours of dinner, eight hours of you know, time with family, eight hours, you know? Um, and so he gave the example that, um, over time he would spend, um, you know, for example, time with his kids and that kind of thing. He said, if there's some meeting that he was leading and he had to be there, then he would miss his son's b baseball game. But he said, but then if there's like a meeting that he didn't necessarily have to be there and, you know, things were kind of taken care of and he could kind of get the notes and stuff, then he would miss the meeting and go to his son's baseball game. Um, was just kind of one example. So I really like that, that like over time he did it. And so the nice part about being your own CEO is that you can take days off, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. if you need to. And of course we are trying to build this business. And so, you know, we don't take very many days off, but you have to be able to show that to coaches that are coming onto our team is onto your team, you know, is that, Hey, look, I do take time for myself. I do meditation and then like today I went to a relaxation spa and was there you know relaxing and stuff and and you have to show them that you're not going crazy all the time you know <laughs> um but yeah it, it is a big the other part of it um is you know doing the power hour that people have talked about where you just go from a list and so I actually have a little list on my I use the Evernote um, so I have a list of things that I either check off or I put next to it how many things I've done, how many invites I've done per day, how many new conversations I've started per day, how many people I've friended per day, you know, and I have that little list that I go off of so that if I find myself starting to scroll Facebook, then I go back to the list. I'm like, okay, well, it says I haven't checked into my Facebook, you know, my challenge groups yet. So I better go check those, you know? Um, and so I think basically part of it is, you know, um, you just taking time for yourself when you need to. And then the other part of it is going to be a lot of like organization, you know, yeah, <laughs> organizing your time and stuff and, and making sure that you're getting the things done that you need to. What, what are your thoughts 
What have you yeah, tried? That, that totally makes sense. Like, um, I mean, I mean, it's, yeah, I think it works. It's like, I think you just kind of have to look at it from a, you know, a situational standpoint. Like, obviously you can't like map out your whole day, but it's like, you know, there are things that you can sacrifice. There are things that you can prioritize over others. And it's just, mm-hmm. I think um, it, you just have to take it day by day. And yeah. um, that makes sense. Yeah. And, and again, going back to like, and the- I think like, yeah. And just being realistic, I think like sometimes I overestimate like how much I can do in a day. <laughs> and you know, it's mm-hmm. like, Oh shoot. Like I just point, like I just scheduled like way too much today. And I think part of that is just being realistic of what I can achieve in a day. Yeah. And, you know, doing first things first, um, all that kind of stuff. So first things first, you know, I get my spiritual health in, you know, I, I read scriptures myself, you know, I got to make sure I pray. I listen to spiritual things. Then first things first is like personal development, getting my workout in. Um, and, and, you know, if you've, if you've read that bo- book, eat that frog, you know, get your invites in first mm-hmm. so that it's like, okay, that's done. So now I can go and make sure that I've, um, friended people and done all this other stuff. Um, and you know, there are some days where I will, um, I will say I'm not going to bed until I have invited four people, you know, or however many I was committing to, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and then, then there's other days that like, I just really feel like I'm like, okay, nope, I've got to go to bed. You know, I've got Mm -hmm. to take care of myself. And honestly, you kind of have to listen to that inner voice again, talking about your personal development. You've got to listen to the inner voice that they talk about. That is an inner guide. You've got to listen and, and, you know, say, um, okay, you know, am I okay to miss out on a little bit of sleep for this or do I need to focus on my health first and Mm -hmm. and then other times it's going to be okay to you know okay well um you know I missed this or that or okay no now is family time and I'm not getting on my phone you got to make sure that you you know don't um try to do other things try don't try to do beach body when you're with your family (laughs) you know unless you've like previously said like this is my beach body time and you're welcome to play around me (laughs) or whatever you know um so i don't know what what else are your thoughts definitely makes sense i think um yeah like what you said just makes sense it's just um getting but like yeah like you said like just getting the important stuff first like Mm -hmm. um personal development like i mean i think i think what i'm going to try to do is like switch it because right now i'm doing personal development in the evening Mm -hmm. before bed but i might try it and do it in the morning before i the first thing before i start my day and see if that changes you know everything for the day because it sets the mood for the day Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what a lot of the coaches say is that before they go and invite people, they are Mm -hmm. listening to their personal development books so that they're in the right mindset. Now, Mm -hmm. do you do audio for your personal development or do you read? I do both. So I read at night and then um, when I'm in the car, I have podcasts going. So I do a mixture of both. Okay, good. Yeah. So, cause that's what I was going to say is the way I do it in the morning is that I, um, mute my uh, workout video and I listen to my personal development while I'm working out. So it's not any more extra time. It's the same amount of time. (laughs) And I, uh, and what I do is I either listen to my audible app or I actually put my laptop by the TV that's playing the um, workout video and I watch um, YouTube videos or I listen to last um, coach wake up call. Um, that's how I get those in is because I ha- you have, <laughs> I'm like, I have to multitask to right. get all this stuff done. And you know, if you're listening and you miss like the change of one of the moves on, that Shanti is doing, it's okay. You're still moving. <laughs> right. You know, it, it's okay to not be perfect at, at those things, but that's how I get my personal development and my that's workout. A good idea. Yeah. Like yeah. So that's one of my big tips that, you know, um, that I tell all my challengers too, is I'm like, Hey, listen to personal development while you're working out. 
And I just mm-hmm. put it so that it, there's subtitles so I can see what they're saying. Mm-hmm. They so, okay. So yeah, well, there's, it says we're, it's going to kick us off in two minutes. So I okay. guess we better wrap it off, R- okay. wrap it up. <laughs> so I appreciate okay. you being here and um, I appreciate everyone that is going to be watching this recording Um, and I just really encourage everyone to continue your personal development and to continue building your business because I really am excited about that concept of that people that you don't even know will be positively affected by meeting the people that you do affect. And so, um, I think that there is a huge work to be done, um, in our country and our continent now that we're in Canada and stuff. Um, so anyway, I will talk to you guys later. So I'll see ya.